Hey Romers, I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roman with Rosie. And we're at White Sands National Park. And we're celebrating uh, something in honor of Linda today. We're here for my birthday. Yep. <laughs> White Sands National Park is 90 minutes north of El Paso, Texas, or one hour from Las Cruces in Alamogordo, New Mexico. This is one of the world's greatest natural wonders and feels like another planet and another time. How you doing? Hi. Good, how are you? All right, former or current U.S. military? No. 25, exact change or car? Uh, we want to do a lifetime pass. 62 or older U.S. citizen? Today, that's yes. Why, that's why I married this old broad, so I can get the discount. Well, you don't get a discount. You just come along. Yeah, I just come along. <laughs> That's what I'm doing for my birthday today. Yeah. That's her That's birthday. Not a bad birthday gift. That's her birthday present. <laughs> ID yeah. there. Yes, it is. Happy birthday, Linda. Thank you. It'll be eighty dollars. Zach, change your card. Card. Perfect. Have you had a parks pass before? Um. Uh, yeah. We did. Okay, this one kind of got to work the same way. It's accepted at the same places. Uh, you, the only difference is you can't have somebody else share this one with you. It's only got one signature line for you. But if you're in the vehicle, it covers the vehicle. Walking in, it's you and three adults. Uh, this one will expire when you do. So if it lasts a very, very long time, get lots <laughs> of use out of it. If right. it ever breaks, bring back the pieces. We'll get you a new one. Okay. okay. If you lose it, it's lost. You got to buy another one, okay? Gotcha. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Have Thanks. a good day. Happy birthday. Thank you. I turned 62 and I wanted to go to a national park and get my rest of my life pass. National park pass. She gets a <laughs> national park pass that's a forever one so she, we don't ever have to pay again. Yeah. Uh, as long as I'm with her. If I'm not with her, then I'm going to have to get my own come April. Yeah. So. So, so we can come to any national park for free for the rest of our lives. Yep. <laughs> Unless you die and then I got to buy my own. <laughs> <laughs> Although this looks like the kind of sand you would encounter on a Caribbean beach, it's actually gypsum that creates the constantly moving dunes which have been witness to the history of humans. We'd seen that you can slide down the dunes and that they sold snow saucers in the gift shop. We thought it would be a fun thing to do, so we picked up a used one and some wax that would supposedly make the saucers slide fast. So we're going to do some sledding today. Seems like the perfect day to do it. Not too hot, not too cold. And this is what we're going to sled. Sand. Yeah. We're going sand sledding. One tip we didn't know was to wax it in straight lines one way, then face the saucer in the direction of your waxed lines. <laughs> he likes it. Right? Just like sledding on the snow. 
I don't know if we were too big, the sand too warm, or too cold, but it wasn't much fun for us. There's a video from the rangers that tells you how best to do it. We watched that after we left the park, so missed some really good tips that might have helped to make it a little more fun. The rangers video also says that after a good rain is the best time to sled. Established as a national monument in 1933, White Sands covers 225 square miles and welcomes visitors from around the world to explore its unique beauty. It only became our 62nd national park in December of 2019, with a purpose of protecting the largest gypsum dune on Earth. It's just otherworldly. We watched a whole lot of videos to plan this trip. That seemed to be the common thing, is that whatever I'm gonna show you that I capture on this camera isn't going to give you a feeling for the vastness and strangeness of it. We're headed out on the Playa Trail, and it's called this because there's water there's a playa. Yeah, there's actually water in the in the uh, little lake bed here. Yeah, playa I believe means beach. So yeah, it's rained a lot this last week, and then last night, and then I think again early this morning. So in fact, when we first left to head up here, it was raining. Yeah. But it's beautiful now, and it's pretty pretty nice weather for September. So we're gonna go out and check out this lake. We're on what's called the east side of the dunes. Um, you can tell because there's a lot more vegetation that holds the dunes in place. If you look further east. Now we are looking east. You can see the mountains and all that. You don't see any sand dunes really at all. I believe I read where eventually after another million or so years those mountains will turn into sand dunes as well. Yeah, let's come back and see. Where White Sand sits is like a big bathtub. It's a basin and there's mountains all the way around here. And those mountains, water comes down and it has nowhere to go. So it stays right here. And so even though it looks like a super barren desert, almost all year round, water's just below the surface. Hear the crunch? Yeah, the best description is that it feels like really rough sandpaper. But it breaks just like that. Look! So these are what hatched the last time the last time there was water here, oh my gosh, there's hundreds, thousands of them. Look at them all. So I wanted to go see some of these alive. They're down here in the water, I'm sure. But I didn't wear muck boots. <laughs> it doesn't smell bad. I'm super sensitive to smell. I was afraid it might smell bad. Like sulfur. But it doesn't. The sand is not actually white, and it doesn't act like sand either. Gypsum grains make the dunes appear white because of scratches. Each grain then reflects the sun or the moon's light, making them appear white. Right next door to the park is the White Sands Missile Range, home to many factions of the U.S. military. If the name sounds familiar, it's because the world's first atomic bomb test took place here in 1945 at the codenamed Trinity Site. When it detonated, it released 18.6 kilotons of power and turned the surrounding asphalt and sand into a green glass. Less than one month later, atomic bombs of similar design were detonated over Japan by the United States. 
the National Park Service opens the location to the public twice a year, in April and in October. There are limited spaces each time as more and more people want to visit than they can safely allow. Dunes Drive is a 16-mile round-trip, otherworldly roadway that goes through White Sands, which leads from the visitor center into the heart of the dune field. However, you're going to want to make stops along the way. There's five established trails in the park. This one is the Interdune Boardwalk. So yeah, right now I got a hiking boot full of sand, so this is kind of cool. And there's markers along here with what the plant life is ahead. It's about a half mile long with a shade structure and places to sit along the path, and it's completely accessible for strollers or wheelchairs. Ten interesting exhibit boards are mounted along the walkway as it meanders through the dune field filled with the answers to your questions. All right, we're gonna do this little trail. It's one mile. Um, I think we'll be walking among the dunes. The gentleman I was just talking to said there's blue posts that mark the trail, so they don't want you to go off it. So let's head out. Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay. There's the blue post right there. There's a blue post. What do you know? We've got just about an hour for we've got to get over to the trail for the sunset ranger guided walk. Come on, go. And we're really looking forward to that. I think there was supposed to be a thermometer there. There it is, right here. Where? Did I miss it? Oh, I was thinking gauge. something big in there. There's well, a thermometer right there. It's pretty to be able to see there's flowers still here in the middle of September. We're starting at an altitude of like 4,500 feet. So I don't know what the elevation is here. But it's a little... This way, bub. A little tough. Going uphill. Wow, look at that. Just the stand of plant? Yeah, that's cool. Is that a cottonwood tree? They said there was a cottonwood tree here that's buried. Oh, maybe, I don't know. This is a cottonwood tree that I am standing above. It's got its roots all the way down and into the ground down there. And it's found a way to survive. Pretty cool. We had time for a couple more photo opportunities throughout the day. Who am I kidding? It's hard not to try to take pictures of everything here. Jamie had to remind me more than once to be present in the moments and just be quiet and listen to the wind. The highlight of the day was the sunset stroll, something they only do on the weekends. It was led by Marita, a very knowledgeable park guide. She brought along lots of learning tools to help visitors of all ages to remain engaged and better understand some of the geological history as well as some of the plant and animal life found here.
I'd like for you all to close your eyes. And really imagine what this depth looks like. Would you see that water? If you were to drop a penny in that hole, what would that sound like? Keep your eyes closed and listen carefully. Oh. After the stroll, Marita and a couple of park rangers hung around to answer questions as we all watched the remainder of the sun's rays go down. As promised, the sand actually stayed almost as bright as it had all day. You too. Hey roamers, we really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it with your friends and family. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. And, and ring that bell. That way you'll be notified each time we upload a new video. And make sure to leave a comment. That way you can be part of the conversation. Until next time. We'll see, see ya. ya.